anything else to add. Yes. Thank you. Martha, there was a lady there who talked about how she's tried farming and failed. And personally, I actually relate with you because I tried to and failed. I was, there was a time I thought I could be a wheat farmer. And unfortunately, I was a telephone farmer, so it didn't go well for me, so I had to abandon it. But she raises this issue of farmers failing, trying something and failing and giving up along the way. But it also brings in the aspect of, you know, people want to succeed very quickly. You want to get returns very quickly. How do farmers work around that? And she also talks about toxic chemicals. Yes. <laughs> That's the one that actually caught my attention. Well, I think that farming is not a hobby, it's a business. So what we lack really is mentorship. I think if she had the right mentorship, perhaps she wouldn't have quit. But let me go quickly to the one on, on uh, toxic chemicals. These are not meant to be toxic chemicals. The pesticides, the herbicides are products with a lot of research has gone into them. They are to help you, help us manage pests, diseases, and those risks that are actually making our agriculture less productive. With climate change, we've seen that there's an increase, an escalation of transboundary pests and diseases, and which are even more resilient to the traditional way of managing them. So the, the research, the science behind these chemicals always brings new products that are safer to use and products that are effective. Now, the challenge and the real problem, here's where the real problem is. You need very effective regulatory frameworks. For every chemical, for every active ingredient, we need to have domestic regulatory limits. To know that if it's used on a product, the residue limits must be not higher than this level. And monitoring programs. Monitoring programs to ensure that as we apply, we are not exceeding those limits. So I see that most of the countries where we have worked, I've worked in many countries in Sub-Saharan Africa, there are no monitoring programs, so, and the farmers are not getting the advice they need in terms of applying them safely, safely to ensure that the product has safe residue limits that are not going to harm consumers or the environment. So I think that's where the problem is. The problem is not in the product. The product is okay, it is safe, it's been tested, it's effective, but it's how you regulate, monitor, and apply it in the field. Mentoring, definitely. Definitely. 